All right. Stand by, Harry. Video is now live. Awesome. Should I do anything? Is there a special wave or something? No, nope. you just hang tight. Where are we live? Well, this will be on YouTube. I like to do more of a blooper reel style. We just show the behind the scenes, you know, and then the actual audio I record separately. So yeah. I, I, just zoom into, I record my Zoom H5. So that way, because okay. YouTube is not my priority, but this is still like, hey, guys can see how we're doing stuff behind the scenes. They understand that, oh yeah, somebody actually hits a record button. And then sometimes there ends up being some extra stuff at the end because when I stop the audio recording, sometimes people end up throwing in extra content. So the YouTube ends up getting a little extra. So nice. anyway. Anyway, stand by and I'll intro you. All right, good day and good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to another Live the Fuel show. So today we're catching up with a gentleman that I got to recently hang out with here outside of Philadelphia. Uh, we got to hang out at the MapCon. This has been coming up a lot over the past couple episodes. That's the Mid-Atlantic Podcast Conference. And uh, obviously this was my second year returning and my first year speaking there. And uh, Harry's got a, a few connections in the industry down there himself. So uh, with a quick little bio on this guy is he's the founder of Fullcast, which is, for me, is important because he's a full service, done for you podcast production and marketing consultancy. Uh, long story short, he's helping six figure entrepreneurs amplify their authority, guys. You know, you're extending your reach through the power of podcasting. I've talked about it before, how podcasting can really open up a whole different demographic of brand growth, exposure, communication, authors, doctors, you name it, podcasting is opening the world up. So besides Fullcast, the guy also is founder and host of Podcast Junkies, which I really want to get more into today. And uh, because that's what I learned most about this year about him when I was down at MapCon. So without further ado, Harry Duran, man, welcome to the show. Hey, Scott, thank you so much for having me on. I'm really excited. Yeah. So, uh, so real quick for our listeners, where are you dialed in from? I'm currently in Los Angeles. Sunny You're in and, LA. Yeah, it's hot today, as a matter of fact. <laughs> well, it's actually really hot out here because here we're in Allentown, Pennsylvania, about an hour, well, hour and a half north of that conference when I ran into you there, but an hour north of Philadelphia, about an hour to hour and a half west of New York City. And it is the end of September, but it hit freaking 90 degrees today. So it's very hot for us right now this time of year because like the leaves are changing and fall's kicking in. You're saying your temperatures are a little bit different. Where are you at right now, temperature-wise? Yeah, it's got to be like, uh, I'm sure it hit 90 today. And uh, it's just, you know, I felt like it, summer was sort of over and we're in our, our shortened, we don't really have a fall. It sort of gets into <laughs> winter and it's all, it just blends in. It you guys are just 60. all in, man. Complete yeah. seasonal shift. <laughs> yeah. That's pretty crazy that we're actually hanging with California weather. Um, definitely unusual. I was out mountain biking last night and we were definitely sweatier than normal for this time of year. I'm like, man, guys, uh, maybe this global warming thing is, <laughs> is real. I don't know. <laughs> Might be. So heck for our listeners, guys, uh, this is Harry, man. This is, we got to hang out at the, at the second annual MapCon and uh, you had quite a presence down there. Your shirts were glowing. Uh, you have quite uh, the color. And for our listeners, guys, if you actually went to, and while I'm talking to you, I'm actually going to pop over and do a quick sh uh, screen share right away because his primary color uh, for the YouTube feeds is you got a lot of yellowish yeah. orange going on. So you're, you're poppy, man. You're popping. So yeah, it, uh, it feels like, I feel like your screen is glowing at this point. <laughs> hey, you chose the color, sir. Okay. <laughs> well, what's interesting is like, um, I, it, I think it was just, I, I had heard that high contrast made a difference. And this is after the fact, I wish I could have said I thought about this at the time, but <laughs> um, that combination of the black against the bright yellow slash orange, it's really why you see a lot of road signs because it's one of the most high contrasting color combinations there is. Well, and it's funny you bring that up because your fellow California buddy down South in San Diego, Mr. Michael O'Neill of Solopreneur Hour has an even brighter color than you. He's yeah. got the, uh, the yellow with the black. So, yeah. uh, he's even brighter, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. but he's talked about the same exact concepts. You guys are playing off of the same uh, marketing knowledge as far as developing branding, picking the right colors, et cetera. I geek out on that stuff. So yeah, um, Michael and I, Michael and I have, have a, a date on our respective calendars. Where we're going to be on each other's shows. Uh, we keep running to each other at the conferences and I saw him at podcast movement, just lounging out. He's like, Hey, now's a good time. Let's, let's <laughs> you want to have that conversation and i was tired i mean, it was one of those long nights at that podcast movement i was like oh brother i i don't think i would be good right now i'm dying to you know get on and and then uh chat it up on your show but i, I figured it wasn't it wasn't gonna be my best performance so. well there's there's two kinds of people there's people like yourself here where it's like you know I, I would like to give quality 
communication quality uh, experience to each other's listeners because you recently recorded with me uh, on, for your show and I yeah. appreciate that. And I, I get it, man. Like podcast movement, I haven't been there myself and I heard it's pretty intense. exhausting and intense. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Especially if you, by now, this, that was my fourth one. It's, it's become a bit of a family reunion for me, Scott. And I just love the fact that I can interact. Um, I was a newbie at the first one. Uh, we had a couple of friends there, but just each year, as you can imagine, if you have a show that interviews podcasters, you mm -hmm. get to know a whole handful over the course of the year. So add those to the list that you've already interviewed. The fact that I do video interviews means I connect with them and network them uh, face to face. So there's a face recognition when I show up and, and then on top to the cherry on top is the bright yellow t-shirt I wear for three days straight. <laughs> <laughs> well, and I, like I said, that's the advantage. Like me this year, I decided to level up, you know, rolled in with a, with a nicer suit, you know, just yep. to do something different, you know, get a little nicer and then you roll in pop in. And that's the whole point. It's like, everybody's got their own style. You yeah. roll in, you got to make sure. And this is kind of like a uh, event 101 type of concept here, uh, ladies and gentlemen, because we highly recommend I'm sure I can speak for you on this one. You can correct me if I'm wrong, but we highly recommend going to events, not just if you're a podcaster, uh, but you and I chat about the other night when I recorded for your show, like tomorrow afternoon, I'm leaving for uh, a wedding on Friday in Syracuse, New York. And then I fly from Syracuse to Las Vegas to attend Thrive Make Money Matter. So mm -hmm. it's a big picture thinking entrepreneurial type of speaking event. And there's going to be 26 like world-class speakers. A couple of them are billionaires, yeah. uh, one, uh, a, a, U, a U.S. Olympian, like all kinds of crazy communicators. And it's like, listen, it's a conference. It's, it's, so it's up to you. Do you want to roll in with a pair of shorts and a t-shirt or maybe level up or for you? Make sure people know, man, like this is podcast junkies. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's so funny, Scott, because I, I made a conscious effort. Obviously, I didn't do that year one. And then I had seen Michael's post. I mean, shout out and full credit to um, the solopreneur, you know, our man himself. And he talked about how it made an impact. And you know what? Um, and this is another thing, too. And, and I, I imagine as you teach people and as you encounter other people's teachings, I, I believe we all stand on the shoulders of giants and people that have gone before us. And so I'm one of the first people to give credit when I see an idea that I repurpose for my own business or for my own podcast. And I, I just got something today. I had a conversation with Jim Collison of The Average Guy TV, and he gave me, a, I, I loved his, his theme on his site um, and something he does with daily tweets for his listeners. And I was like, okay, I'm going to take that. But you just always give credit. So, uh, so credit to Michael O'Neill for that. And then I realized in the beginning, you know, I was like, oh, I got to, you know, look good and, and dress sharp. And, and I save that for the evening events at the podcasting conferences. But I said, you know what, this is a conference for me to get awareness about my show. And I can't be shy. Like if I'm not the first one to be the champion of my own show, how can I possibly expect anyone else to be the cheerleader? Like I have to be the one out there wearing the shirt and starting the conversation. So I bought 50 t-shirts, second year, 50, third year, 75. This year I took a hundred t-shirts all gone within two or three days. And it's, you know, I, I, it's the, one of the best investments I've made because it's positioned me in the podcast and that podcasting conference as the guy with the yellow shirt. And now, you know, people know it. Well, and if you guys are at the same conference, you guys, you'd be, you and Michael be the two guys with two yellow shirts. The difference yeah. is he's got the niche towards the solopreneur, right? The entrepreneurial minded person. And he and I both have had a lot of podcasters on, but obviously you've chosen a niche. And we yeah. talk about this in business a lot. Like people need to really niche themselves or be very specific on their niches that they're trying to focus on. So clearly the new podcast junkies brand, we're not really new, but I mean, different than full cast. It's like, Hey man, I'm oh, clearly yeah. targeting a specific audience. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And I, I think it's really important because everything you do should be congruent with, with that brand. And, and like I said, like when I tell people, Hey, do you want the free shirt? Or do you want the $10 shirt at the conference? They're like, uh, of course I want the free one. Well, I'm like, well, you got to just do one thing. So open up your phone subscribe to podcast junkies on the spot <laughs> there, you and go. there you go and because I'm, I'm literally trying to grow people and let them know and it's exhausting don't get me wrong like walking the hallways i don't, I don't do a lot of the breakout sessions at this point um, i'm more concerned with the connections i can make from a uh, networking perspective and the one-to-one -one. and the one thing you have to be aware of at, at these conferences and you've probably experienced it yourself scott is be focused on the person you're talking to. Mm -hmm. I made a, con a conscious effort this, this year to not be the guy that's looking over your shoulder as I'm talking to you, waiting to see if maybe there's a better conversation I can jump into or someone that I haven't talked to. Because at the end of the day, you're, you're going to have meaningless conversations with a bunch of people as opposed to you know 10 to 15 that you can literally remember where you were and when you had it. Well, that's not even, I mean, yes, it is a very valuable lesson for conferencing um, or events, attending events, but that's actually a very human 
best practice that yeah. because it's so easy to get distracted by technology, smartphones, texts, uh, help back, back in the day when we still were supporting pagers and smartphones, even before the smartphones, it's very easy to have distractions. And I agree with you. It's some people, they're constantly looking for the next best thing. And you don't know who you're talking to. Like you could literally stumble across a billionaire. He could be wearing just a scrubby t-shirt, a pair of shorts because he just doesn't care, he or yeah. she. Yeah. And you don't know. But if you're looking for the sharp dressed guy and it's like, oh, you know, good talking real quick. And then boom, bail. You have no idea what you just walked away from. So mm -hmm. if you're going to take the time to try and reach out and get to know somebody, focus on them. You can catch up with somebody later. You know, just yeah. really keep it a, a real person to person communication, just like you and I are doing in podcasting. That's why I love the intimacy of podcasting because it's like, hey, man, I have no excuse to be distracted. I'm in my home studio. Like, there's you close the door and there's no one else around. So, yeah. the other now, thing is is about making just a follow up and, and uh, wrap up on this converse on the conference best practices. Mm -hmm. I found um, I, I signed up for the service called Full Contact. It's, um, it, I think it's about 70, 80 bucks for the whole year. It's one of the best investments, investments ever made. It connects to your Gmail contacts. And what it does is it's got a fantastic mobile app so that I can scan my business cards now. And it oh, yes, yes. Op optical character recognition. And they said there's actually a human that QAs the final uh, pass of the card. It gets synced up. It reads the, the information, syncs it up to the database. And then at the same time, it's syncing with your Google contacts and it reads signatures email Ooh. signatures in gmail as well so you can imagine it's aggregating all this stuff i like the i like the google integration because yeah. all of my all of my well all of my clients and all of my accounts are actually a, a gmail back end it's google yeah. i mean you can do custom domain email like my live the fuel yeah. so it's like it's that's it that's see now you got me intrigued because i know there's other apps where they'll actually save it to your iphone yeah but you know there's only so much capacity on an iphone there's, there's certain contacts you don't need them in your phone right yeah. you just need a database to accept access yeah. them quickly and easily and full contact has done that the best. Uh, I used to do Evernote. Evernote had a card scanner, but I'm like, where's it going after it does that? I think it was trying to sync up to LinkedIn, but it didn't. LinkedIn had one as well. But this is the best one because essentially what my workflow is now, I get the card, I scan it in, I make sure it's, it's captured, and I toss the card in the trash. You know, and, and I know that it's going to sync up to, um, and I usually follow up with people with an email. But I'm just going, I'm sort of like doubling down on the connection to make sure that it's valuable because that's what we go to these conferences for, to, to make connections, to, to meet people, exactly. and to figure out if there's opportunities that we can you know, work together in the future. And, and if you, if you um, do it haphazardly and you're like, oh, yeah, I got these cards and, and I come back. I mean, I take a, I've got like a little thing that I'm known for now. I lay them all out on my floor and I take a picture <laughs> of all of them. I'm like, these are all the people I met. I did yourself. notice that. I did notice that on your social media feed. And is this what you're talking about right here that I'm sharing on the video yeah. feed? Full, Full contact. contact. Yep. I love their tagline here because they're using my favorite buzzword, fuel, man. Their Look person and company insights to fuel your project. I like Could, that. Couldn't have planned that better. <laughs> yeah. I was like, man, I'm already liking these guys already. So this is the best part. I'm actually going to get something taken away from my own show notes. <laughs> um, because, I mean, my biggest client, they're huge Salesforce users. And yeah. that's just one of the most powerful CRM solutions for sales and marketing or really any business who has a sales team or anything, but that's also pricey. Mm -hmm. So this is great for just the, the basic entrepreneur. Or it's like, hey man, like you don't need a big pricey Salesforce solution. This is, hey, don't lose the contacts. Yeah. It's really that easy. I like that. Now, when yeah. you sync up the business cards, is it giving you an option to, because one of the old school uh, trade secrets is don't just take a business card write something on the card mm -hmm. that was unique about them or what you learned or where yeah. you met them at. Does the, do they allow that when you first scan it in to add like a little tag on it? Yeah. Notes. There's notes, the and, notes. and there's tags and notes. So I, I, I use them interchangeably, but typically the, the tag is like the conference name. See, I'm a, ne I'm a networking machine. When I meet people, I'm already yeah. LinkedIn, linked, <laughs> uh, inning oh, them yeah. or Facebooking them. I'm like you, I jump, yeah. I, I love networking. I love growing the networks. And it's something that I've actually been able to take into podcasting because like for you, like, when I bring on a new co-host, I'm already thinking, who else can I get them connected with? Who can I get them introduced to? And it might not come out tonight, but it'll come out by the time I publish the episode. And I'm usually forwarding or sending an introduction email to either another podcaster or to, like I've, had, I've hooked up doctors to other healthy podcasts, like you name it. I'm, that's, yeah. my, that's my new thing. Uh, after like episode 100, I finally said, you know what? Just in my co-host database alone, I have enough people to potentially bounce off of each other and help people grow. Like you said, stand on the shoulders of giants. Well, there's some giants that I've had on the show and I'm like, other people need to learn from those giants. Let me see if I can get those giants on somebody else's shows because mm -hmm. again, it's not just about me. Yeah. It's just, there's other valuable podcasts that have different demographics, different exposures, and let's get them out there.
pay it forward. Exactly. I love this. I don't know how, how geeky you want me to get, but I take it to another level once it's in my database. All right. All right. Let's go ahead and throw <laughs> on one more geekdom. I guess that word geekdom. I don't I'm know. I'm a uh, huge, <laughs> huge uh, productivity and automation nerd. I mean, I'm, I'm a really a fan of doing, as entrepreneurs, we, try, we have to do more with what we have. And sometimes we're as solopreneurs and sometimes maybe we'll have, get one or two VAs that we start working with. But mm-hmm. I'm a huge fan of standard operating procedures. I use a tool called Zapier. S- which, SOPs for some SOPs. people who have, I've worked with them before. <laughs> yeah. And uh, Zapier is, it's, uh, if, for those of you that are not familiar with it, there's a, there's a simpler version of it called ifttt.com where you can automate. I have some, it. Yeah. Some and I just don't spend enough time playing with it yeah. because I, it's, it's, it's funny because I'm like you. I geek out on that stuff. I want to spend the time to do it. It's just like, I just haven't budgeted the time to do it. Yeah. It's because it's like, you know, One, you got to invest a little bit of time, yeah, then you learn. get it done and you will free up the time. I think that's the yeah. whole point of it. So if this, then what? that. Yeah, if this and that, they're called uh, recipes. And one of the most common ones was when uh, Twitter took away the ability to see your Instagram post, when you would post your Instagram and send it to Twitter. Long oh, yeah, they just, they just sent a hyperlink now. Yeah, now they send a hyperlink. Yeah. But if you can create, there's an IFTT recipe, it's a very popular one, that you connect your Instagram and you connect your Twitter. And what it does is when, you're, when you post on Twitter, it'll create the picture and the post and it'll create a tweet on Twitter with both pieces to make it look more professional. See, now that you got me interested in because my primary platforms are Instagram, Facebook. But like when I launch a podcast episode, you, you will get blasted across Facebook, mm-hmm. uh, Instagram, Twitter, LinkedIn. Those yeah. are my primary platforms. Uh, but I've also gone back to the old school way of organically placing those posts because sometimes the automation isn't always the best thing. Yeah, doesn't There's pros and cons. But yeah. that kind of hack would reopen that because like I said, that's why I, most of the time I'm not swiping on Instagram to say, yeah, go ahead and send it to Twitter. Cause I don't like what it looks like. Yeah. So, yeah. So that's a recipe you can use. Mm. And so Zapier is the enterprise level of that. It works with like accounting software and CRMs and infusion softs and entreports. So it's really like the legit one and, and I have a paid service. And so what I've done now is once I, I, I send that off to, uh, to get synced up, um, I have people fill out a form. This is really geeky, but I a type form and says, "Hey, I want rather than me going hunt around and trying to find out what your social profiles are, because a lot of people use different names, and you're like, True. Is, this, is, it, is this the Scott that I'm looking for? Is this? The yeah, Scott like there's I- some people who like, hey, they might have added an underscore yeah. or something like that, yeah, and exactly. only because somebody else might have already snagged the, the the screen name. Yeah, I was lucky, man. Nobody had live the fuel. I locked it down across nice. the board across the board instantaneously. So. Yeah. It was like, hey, man, buy the domain and then lock down every single <laughs> social media platform, real estate. That's what Very I call smart. it, even if I'm not using it. And that's, totally. that's another best practice there to our listeners. So hopefully folks are jotting this down. We're I don't know, man. Like, this is why I have show notes. <laughs> this is why we have to put good show notes together. So. So, the, so what I do is I say, hey, I'm testing out this new way of connecting with you to make sure I capture all your social media profiles. And I send them a type form. And so the type form is like a Google form. It says, what's your LinkedIn? What's mm-hmm. your Twitter? And so I get the actual profiles. Yes. And then what I do is I actually, I create a zap that says, when we get this submitted, send an email to my virtual assistant. She has access to my LinkedIn. She has access to my Facebook. She actually goes in and connects to those people. I did notice when I booked my session on your show, like you're using Calendly versus I'm Calendly. using Acuity. Yeah. But, and again, I just have to find the time to do it, but I've already added a, I've already, I already did a couple of enhancements to my onboarding form through my scheduler on the website. But then I saw yours. I'm like, I've, I've been meaning to do this. I just give people a, a paragraph like box to let them just dump their info into it. I'm literally, sure. I, I need to start basically leading the horse to water and telling them, no, seriously, give me all of your profiles. So here's your yeah. Twitter field, your LinkedIn field. Yeah. Like I just need to build that out. Um, and I wonder if I can actually embed that through all those platforms using Google Forms. If not, I know I can do it on Acuity. So. You can. Yeah, yeah, and I think that the great the, the, the takeaway there, Scott, is the fact that you, especially for when we're talking about guests, you want their experience to be so smooth mm-hmm. in everything leading up to the conversation, like in the way you met them at the conference, in yeah. how you started that first conversation by email, in the way that they sign up for your show, and, and then you're not chasing them down afterwards. Oh, by the way, I need to do this one more thing. Or can you send me your photo? Can you send me your Yeah, photo? I've only had one failure since opening up my schedule on the website. And that was because like I told you, I'm like, hey man, just go to I, Nick at lunch yesterday. He's like, uh, shout out to Nick of the in, uh, independent, or sorry, the dependent independent, independent. podcast. Uh, but we, were, we grabbed lunch yesterday and he was like, so at the end of the uh, lunch, I was like, dude, just find time to get on the show so I can promote what you're doing. Yeah. And he's like, well, how do I do that? And I was like, I told you, just go to livethefuel.com, click on schedule, pick yeah. podcast recording, and that's it. And he's like, oh, 
He's like, I should probably get around to doing something like that. I was like, yeah, dude. Like it's like, oh, yeah. uh, it, it needs to be easy. Like, I don't know. I mean, you, you can help me out. You went through my onboarding process. Mm -hmm. it, there's always room to improve, but was it somewhat smooth enough for you? Yeah. No, I mean, I'm okay. so used, I'm so used to, I'm so used to that being my experience nowadays uh, that when it doesn't happen, it's really jarring mm -hmm. or when the back and forth emails start like, Hey, can you do this time and this time? Yeah. Oh, I forgot like to ask you for this. or I forgot to ask you yeah. for that. Yeah. That's why I launched a scheduler. I tell people like, I, I forget what podcasts I listened to, but they said, listen, you're, t you can't replace time. You know, time mm -hmm. is irreplaceable. Once you've spent it, it's gone. So they said, what is your time worth? Do you want to oh, spend yeah. time locking people into your schedule manually or put your schedule out there, make mm -hmm. it available. And I said, I was afraid at first. I'm like, wait a minute, I can control oh, yeah. how much of my schedule I want to put out there. So like yeah. my coaching time is separate. I, I can decide. And actually I'm literally, as we're geeking out about this, it's already popped in my head. I'm like, you know what? I'm going to hone this even tighter. I've actually been wanting this to get to the point where I'm saying, you know what? I only want to do podcast recordings two nights a week. And I've not done that yet. I'm, I'm still pretty wide open. And I'm like, I wonder if I should do that. Do you do that? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. I do it now. I block out. So you only uh, allow two times a week to be able to do it. I do a little bit. It is two days in total, but it's Wednesday afternoons specifically, all okay. Thursday, and then only Friday mornings. After like uh, 12 or 1, that's it. I'm done for the rest of the week. See, I'm liking, I, I've been, again, because um, it's only, again, to our listeners like who are newer, like this show is only just over a year old. You know, it was a one year at the MapCon. And I was like, okay. It's, it's funny, as you grow your new platform, like I already have brand, but I was like, you know, this is something new. So I don't want to mm -hmm. get too um, unapproachable, I guess you can yeah. say. Because I, 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 I truly believe that the best leaders try and remain as approachable as possible. I know as you grow in fame or exposure, eventually you got to start putting up some speed bumps to slow down the people coming into you. Uh, but in the end, I want to try and remain as approachable as possible. So I've, I've held back on locking that down too much. I, I was worried about, oh, wait a minute. What if I, I start losing podcast hosts like, and, I, and I, all of a sudden I don't have enough people coming in you know, to mm -hmm. keep the show cycle going for two because I do two a week. So yeah. that's why I haven't done it. I was worried about, well, what if I, like someone has to schedule out two months from now because my schedule gets too tight. So, yeah. yeah. It's definitely something to play with, but I think I, it, you don't want to get in your own way sometimes. And I think we tend to overthink it sometimes and you, mm. and you, and that perception that like, Oh, I'm not being ac accessible. But I think what you're demonstrating to people, especially in, in stuff you, you know, I'm sure you talk about on your show is, is demonstrating that your time is valuable and True. saying, look, I'm, I, I pride my time and I, I pride myself on being efficient. And I talk to you guys and I talked on the show about how our time is our most valuable asset. So I've got to walk the walk as well. So, I've got these two slots and you know, you're more than welcome to, you know, use every last minute of it. But you know, that's, that's the time that I set aside and, and you're sort of setting the, the, the example. Yeah. I, I like this point because it's uh, this is another side effect of that point, which is sometimes there's a psychological benefit uh, to the people looking in where it's like, wow, this person's really, really busy. Mm -hmm. I better jump on this as soon as possible. So maybe I should free my schedule up so I can get into that time slot. Yeah. So that's the other psychological thing. It's like you can actually create almost like, oh, they're on high demand. I better get in sooner rather than later because he only has so many slots open. So that's exactly. the other thing that I've noticed too. Yeah. It's a little bit of scarcity and it's not, you know, I'm not a fan of like a lot of this fake and false scarcity that we see now with yeah. a lot of online marketers. But I think it's in a way people have to have a little bit of a kick in the butt to get something moving because if you leave it so open for them, it's like, oh, I'll get to it. He's got so much time available. Like, he, uh, you know, he's, in, he's got plenty of time for me. And right. I'll do it when it's convenient. Or then all of a sudden people are like, man, this is all this guy does is podcasting. And I, I always remind people too, I'm like, dude, the podcast is something fun for me. Yeah. I haven't technically monetized. I mean, depending on how you define monetization, I haven't monetized it per se. I've picked up some disc discount codes from some healthy companies that I, sure. I love using. So sweet, thanks to the platform, yeah. I can now save money when I'm buying stuff. Cause I, you know, like olive oil and my favorite nuts or whatever, like the company's giving me my own discount code for my audiences. Yeah. So, uh, but they're not paying for me to promote them on the show. So I don't have to do a commercial or anything like that. <laughs> so well, I haven't gotten to that point yet. Yeah. I mean, the great thing about it, and we heard about it at MapCon is the idea of your podcast being your media platform. And yeah. now I'm making a more conscious effort as I see sites or events that I want to go to conferences. If, 
the first thing I ask is if they need a speaker, because I've been tra- working on my speaking game. Same here. Um, so, and then the second thing is like, okay, did, how about a press pass? Can I get a press pass? And so like, as podcasters, and as we grow our shows, let's not overlook the fact that we can go in and make that ask if it's in an industry that wouldn't mind having some coverage. Yeah, you know, it's funny because that Thrive Make Money Matter event, I was there last year. And since then, I mean, these two post-its hanging right here are all the different co-hosts that I've brought on the show that I met because of that. And then I told the founder of the event, who I had on the show recently, Cole Hatter, and I thought about it like I'd already bought a ticket to the event. I buy, you know, when when the event closed down, just like a MapCon, I just go ahead and buy the next year's ticket. It shows my commitment. Um, But I was like, you know, man, I... I was the only podcaster that have, has made that much of an impact from that community. I wonder if I could work that for next year. So actually, when I go out there this weekend, I'm going to talk to them about them. I'm like, listen, man, I've had on more people on my podcast from your event than ever. Yeah. What, what could we do here? You know, maybe that's next year. Guest about uh, finances and then they go to FinCon and they become like a, official coverage of the, of, the, of the conference. You know, there's, there's, so you've, done, you've done FinCon. I have not done FinCon. Oh. It's on my list of things, you know, list to do. And, and I know I've, I've got a lot of friends that have, that have gone and say really good things about it. And the organizer PT is super amazing. I've, I've heard this okay. as well. Yeah. So but you're yeah, definitely, you're definitely going to try and work that whole press pass angle then? Or? I'm going to keep, you know, why not? I mean, I was actually talking to the people at the Austin Film Festival and I was going to be in Austin the weekend after, the week after. So I said, well, I'll make it two weeks out of it. Uh, so it, that's in the works. But if I could because they're going to do a whole fiction podcast series. So this lines up perfectly with Podcast Junkies. Um, and the fact that they're looking how, at how now people are taking podcasts and converting them into shows. And there's agents that are actually looking for podcasts to turn into shows. Really fascinating stuff. So I want to be in on those conversations. And so if I can get there without, uh, and I have a client that lives in Austin um, who's willing to put me up. So if, it would just be the flight for me. So, you know, there's all opportunities, no matter what kind of podcast you have, whatever topic you're on, if you do enough research and you make it part of like your regular uh, activities, to just always be looking for these opportunities. I mean, they're out there. I like that. Well, and the best part is what you just, you just finally helped me figure out how I'm going to get you networked. <laughs> like that's what I was writing on the whiteboard just now is um, I've had on the show uh, of bestselling author, Mike McCallowitz of the profit first. Yeah. Um, and so I'm connected with him. His daughter's actually come out and trained with my fiance's veterinary business because she wants to be a vet. He lives in New Jersey. I've, I was his first guest on his podcast that ever came to their offices uh, because they run the Profit First Professionals. Yeah. And I know they got people connected with FinCon. Then the other one I'm going to get you connected with is Whitney Hansen. And her whole niche is the uh, millennial generation of uh, finance and everything else. So she's all about saving money and everything else. And I know she's gone to FinCon. So right there, I've already got, and they both have their own podcasts. Yeah. They have the Profit First Professionals podcast and she's got her podcast. So I was like, great. I've already got two people I can get you connected to when I'm done with the show. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so, Profit, that Profit First book was amazing. I'm still- like- I've got both versions <laughs> of it. They re-released it this year. Do you know that? I think I've got the new one. I did it on Kindle and it just blew my mind. Like it's, it's so like practical. It's one of those ones you got to stop and you're like, okay, I need time to like uh, put this into action. And so I've been just renaming my accounts and I still got to set up the physical ones. Yeah. It was, it, I, I loved it. It was one so of this those. One's the original. Yeah. And then they re-released this one this year. Yeah. And then he released another new book called surge. Yeah. He's got like four or five books now. So yeah, it's just um, fascinating stuff. And um, just the. And I physically have never read any of these because <laughs> then I bought all the audiobooks because I just yeah. don't have the time to read. <laughs> no, of course. I, uh, yeah, very few that I read uh, physically. But yeah, the, 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 um, yeah, the ebook was amazing. The Kindle was amazing. Well, and I'm with you on that because I'm glad you read it because I've actually fully implemented his system into my okay. business. Yeah, I'm on my way there. Yeah. I just re- rename, I got to set up a couple more accounts. Uh, and for the listeners who, who don't know, I mean, it's just a fantastic concept of thinking. It's about- based on old school stuff. They yeah, just put a new school spin on it and yeah. added a few tweaks. And my old school accounting friends don't freaking get it. You know, they're like, oh, no, no, you, you take your income minus your expenses. And that's what your profits are. Yeah. And it's like, no, dude, why don't you start paying your profit first? Oh, yeah. So right now I only put 2% into a profit account. Yeah. So, and then actually it's the end of September. So I'll be doing my quarterly distribution okay. next week. Nice. So I'm doing it. And actually I hired my first bookkeeper. Okay. So I only pay her for one consultation a month, 75 bucks an hour. Oh, 
Okay. But then she goes over everything that I've been doing and there's, they can do way more hands-on, but they referred me. And actually, if you remember the book, it's Deborah who works with Mike Michalowicz. It's oh, his, nice. that's the one where uh, he said in the book how Deborah called him out and said, oh, you're not doing things right, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> it's that girl. It's that woman. Okay. Yeah, well, I, ha- I have her as my bookkeeper. <laughs> okay, we might have to talk afterwards. <laughs> I was like, well, well, this is awesome. So yeah, um, but she's been, it's been great because we literally do a live Zoom call. Mm-hmm. I log right into my bank accounts, show her everything. I had her, I had her, uh, we signed a, um, NDA. you know, full exclusion or whatever you call it. Non- basically, non-disclosure. She, yeah. yeah, non-disclosure. So she yeah. can't, uh, cause I'm a big legal guy on that. And then uh, it just made me so comfortable. And then as we progress, you know, I might use her more and more down the road. I'm actually already thinking about leaving my accountant because they don't understand it. I'm like, I'm just going to hire her. She has her own yeah. accounting company and everything. Nice. And she has her own people doing it. So I'll definitely hook you up with Deborah. Cool. So we're geeking out like crazy here. So, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's a lot of topics we're discussing here, but this is just, even though we're podcasters and you're a podcast junkie, um, and obviously the founder of Fullcast, uh, clearly you're very niched in the podcasting community, but again, you're just a regular guy who started some businesses and you're trying to figure out the financial game and the accounting game. Like we're, we're not special people. Mm-hmm. I, I've always liked to bring that back to kind of reality here because people might be hearing this like, oh man, this guy's the full cast guy. He's the podcast junkie guy. Like, let's bring it back down to the earth here. I mean, oh, yeah. it sounds like you've had some of your own little struggles and you've, I mean, this is not an easy lifestyle. Like trying to add this into your lifestyle. I mean, can you talk a little about that? Sure. I mean, I, I think it's one of these, the first biggest thing that creeps in is imposter syndrome. Mm. Um, and it's this idea that who am I to give people like advice and who am I to give coaching and imagine me like I get into the podcasting space at the time when like Pat Flynn and John Lee Dumas are like literally household names and people are like oh so it was it was just intimidating enough to have a podcast and then I started interviewing, interviewing podcasters and then I never thought I could build a business out of it because I'm like, well, there's plenty of courses out there. Mm-hmm. But I, I work with a great coach. I continue to work with him. His name is Taki Moore. His program is called Black Belt. Um, and it just dramatically changed the way I think about business. And I realized I wanted to serve a specific community. And so I created a premium offering. And then I said, let me find out like where these people hang out. And so I invested in myself in high end masterminds. I went to conferences. I started to become friends and, and started to be seen in these circles by these people who I admired. But let's pause on that. What were you doing while you were doing this? Were you, did you already have the full cast business or no, were you kind of like, you still had like a, was this your side hustle? Yeah. Yeah. So I started out uh, in 2014 when I started podcast junkies, I was still working at my full time gig. I was doing okay. IT consulting. Yeah. Um, and I had tried, you know, you heard a little bit of my story at PapCon, but I had tried five or six different things. You know, I kept falling on my face, yeah. but I was always. And there. I've also come from the IT space. So I'm with yeah. you, brother. <laughs> so it was, not, it was uh, but nonstop, you know, that yearning, I think when you, when you have it in you, it's going to come out. And, and I'm not one of those that just one magical day, I decided I'm going to be an entrepreneur. I quit my job and I, you know, pulled a, uh, you know, who's with me. <laughs> Like Tom Cruise. Um, oh, again, there. movie, yeah. not reality, but yeah, yeah, yeah. awesome movie. Exactly. But And then yeah, it was just, just a gradual, but I was always planting seeds and I was like, and I had the podcast and then I had my coach. I believe everyone should have a coach. I don't care how successful you are. Uh, yep. you, always, you always need that, that different it's, point. It's funny you bring that up because I've recently said how I, I actually moved on from one of my coaches and I've been off of a coach for about two, three months mm-hmm. and it's already getting to me. I was like, I knew it's going to take me time to find a new coach. I just need to commit to a new coach. I've, already, I've narrowed it down to two or three and I'm like, yep. I just need to get it going again because I truly believe in the statement of every good coach has a coach. Oh yeah. Right? Totally. Yeah. If your coach doesn't have a coach, then you need to fire your coach. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cause that means, that means they've, they've reached a point where they think they know everything yeah. and that's dangerous. That's we will never true. know everything people. <laughs> yeah. And so one of the things that, um, Taki was very helpful in helping me decide is like, what's your genius? Like, what, what do you, what do you want to do? Like, what do you work on? That's when you're working on it, you're in the zone and it's so powerful for you. And you feel like this is the, the best thing that you do. He outlined these, these four categories, uh, of tasks, those you're incompetent at, those you're competent at, and you're excellent at, and you're genius. Obviously, incompetent, competent, you, you know, you have no business doing those. You just get those off your plate as soon as possible. Uh, an easy example is like the housekeeper, you know, if she comes, you know, twice a month to your house to clean, you know, that's what she does. That's, that's yeah. you know, her genius, and she does that better than you, and you have no business doing that. 
I would um, agree with that. Like I actually, I actually have a housekeeper. It's scary that I was, I never thought I'd ever see that. <laughs> and then I just got tired of my fiance complaining because I'm always traveling and I don't clean enough. So yeah. it's like, fine, at least once a month yeah. uh, in the beginning, I've done that for the past six months. Now we we've had somebody come in and professionally clean the house. Oh my God, by the way. How amazing, just, How amazing is that? Dude, I mean, <laughs> you come home and like, it smells like a new home. Fresh, yeah. And it's like, oh, and everything is so clean and shiny. And it's like, I don't have to lift a finger. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm, now granted, eventually we need, it'd be nice to get that to like a weekly thing. But hey, baby steps, right? Just yeah, like you're so kind of talking about here. Things start slowly. You got to yeah. build momentum. And so the excellent tasks are where a lot of entrepreneurs get stuck because it's, it's the skill set that we learned and all these courses we took. And like maybe for podcasters, you can do a little bit of web design or you can do a little video editing or you can do a little bit of audio editing. And then you I, realize- do, that, I do that now on the, on the website stuff. I'm not a web designer, but I know enough to help a few people here and there. And then if it gets too complicated, I outsource it but also enough to be dangerous sometimes. And you find yourself in an eight hour CSS HTML rabbit hole. And you're like, what? Well, I was just trying to change a graph. Yeah, that is all you, bro. That, that's it. See, you're, you, I'm gone. No, <laughs> I'm calling Harry. But, but, but substitute <laughs> another task that you're really good at, but it's not your genius. And right. And those are the ones that are harder to let go of. Come like, no, I'm really good at this. I was known for this. But really like as an entrepreneur, our genius tends to lie in this ability to connect with people and to acquire new businesses, I mean, new, new clients and have conversations with prospects and show them that, you know, what it is that we're really good at and convince them to work with us. Like that's what, that's our superpower. That's what we do. So true. sooner you can get a team to support you, Scott. It, I mean, for the listeners, it's just an important thing to do and, and have that mindset from the beginning. You should document every single thing you do so that you're ready to hand it off, whether it's just you. Um, but at some it's point- It's the beauty of things like Google Drive, Dropbox, yeah. just start filing stuff. Yeah. And just do the simple math, like take your annual salary or whatever you make per year and, and work it down to an hourly rate. If you mm-hmm. can pay someone less than that to do a task, you know, you should be in that mindset of like, yes, I'm going to pay that person. Yeah. They do it faster. They typically do it faster than you do. I have never edited my own podcast shows yeah. since starting. That's good. Like I wanted to, sat yeah. there studying all the software and did just what you said. I was like, I'm spending all this time. And technically, I like, usually, but traditionally, I like to learn it to understand it. So I, I, you know, I was researching all the softwares that all the podcast gurus recommended, how to edit. I started playing with it. And then as I, once I started recording the shows, I realized – for the podcast, my genius is I want to focus on this conversation. Yeah. A quality experience. You and I getting to know each other, the, the listeners having a good experience, plenty of energy. And then I just want to take this file and have somebody else deal with it. Done. So I've uh, never done it. <laughs> that's good. That's so, good. You had that mindset from the get go. It was scary yeah. uh, because I, it's a, as a control factor, it's like you want to like have a little bit. I mean, like I said, I know enough to get myself in trouble. And I'm like, nah, I'm good. Yeah. Uh, I'm fine. And, and I outsource it. <laughs> so so uh, can I ask you, I know it's, it's really hard for a podcast host to be on another podcast and resist the urge to ask questions. <laughs> uh, dude, this is, remember, remember, you're a co-host. You're not a guest. Yeah. So we, we're here together. We're sharing this episode. So I want you to feel equal authority. Good. Thank you so much. Uh, so how's the, 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 I'm curious about the response to the show and which types of episodes have resonated with uh, the listeners and whether it's people that are new or maybe even people that have been listening to you for a while, is there a certain type of content that people listen to or the ones you get the most feedback on? I could probably do a better job of like paying attention to that, but I've been just in just full, like go, go, go publish, publish, publish. I haven't really, I hardly ever go and look at my stats other than like I have, I use the time hop app. So it pulls up whatever I did a year ago. And then it gives me the option of refer- referencing it to today or yesterday. Like, so I think, I think it was yesterday I published out to the social media a year ago yesterday. I was public posting the social media saying, please help me hit my first 1,000 total downloads. Okay. And then uh, the file I posted like today, yesterday, one year later, I was at like, I don't know, I'm at around 38, 39,000 downloads. So it was like, it was just cool to see like, hey, one year ago today, I was begging people mm-hmm. online to try and give me some more downloads so I could break that 1,000, you know, cherry there. And I was like, nah, okay. Like, I'm looking at it right now. Here we go. Actually, yeah, here, I, I hide nothing. I mean, because <laughs> I use the podcast websites platform. Okay. So here's the back end. Yep. So right here, I've got, oh yeah, God, I, today I crossed 38,000 downloads. So, right. or maybe it was right. last night. So there you go. So last night I crossed over 38,000 trying to get to that 40. Like I, I just, I don't know. I'm just pushing content. So, and I, I actually, and their platform is not perfect. Uh, I don't, we, they don't use Libsyn for the data. So I've never experienced Libsyn. I, I literally, that's the other thing. My other hack was I launched on their platform. Um, 
Mark Asquith yeah. from the beginning. So I've never known anything else but that. I've always paid for this. So I, I joked around people, my guys, like from day one, besides buying all this hardware, I was spending, I spend 90 bucks a month to use their platform and hosting. But because I just didn't want to, I, don't, I basically moved my entire website onto their platform and just said, here guys, quickly redesign this, make the podcast stand out first because that's the primary core of their platform because yeah. I really wanted to make the, plat, you know, the podcast really be a leader for the Live the Fuel for the, for the first year. And that's what I did. So, um, but I, I know for a fact that because we talk about health, business, and lifestyle, it's interesting though because yeah, obviously the certain episodes will lead into one direction more of another, depending if I'm talking to an entrepreneur or a doctor or a biologist or an author. Um, but it is interesting to see how as the show grows, I can get all of those people to talk about all three of those domains. Mm -hmm. So, it, you know, obviously one will be, you know, one uh, more focused than another, but like I can go here. I know for a fact, for example, the biggest downloaded episodes ever, and no one still has beaten him yet, was Dr. Jack Cruz, who's a uh, famous neurosurgeon. Okay. Uh, huge biohacker, mitochondria hacker, as you want to call it, to the cellular level. Uh, but that guy's got like over 7,000 downloads. Um, his YouTube video from that episode, he was the first time I started using this and doing YouTube. That yeah. went viral. Like he, he's got more downloads on YouTube and podcasting than anybody else because he has such a big online community. Of course. So he is one of those examples where he doesn't have a podcast. So he, if someone talks about him or gets him on their show, he shares it to all his social media feeds and then boom. Mm. And then because of Google, his name recognition, people come keep coming across my episodes. So it's interesting to see that happening. Um, anyway, so it's just funny. Actually, let me go back here. 51. And right here. Yeah, your mitochondria and biohacking with Dr. Jack Cruz. Mm -hmm. So I want to see what that comes up with. And by, by, is, is this helping you, by the way? Yeah, yeah. Where did you make that connection? <laughs> I had another guy on who's one of his followers. He's the second most downloaded episode. <laughs> and he, and, uh, and then to Dr. Jack Cruz uh, shared that episode. That's what made that episode go, go viral, the other guy. And, and then I just reached out to Jack. I'm like, hey man, thanks for sharing your episode. I'd be honored if you wanted to come on. I didn't even know Jack shared it. I, I wasn't paying attention to my stats. And all mm -hmm. of a sudden one of my buddies on Facebook messages me. He's like, yo, dude, the Jack Cruz shared your show. And I was like, I went from like, barely a blip on the radar to like all of a sudden for the next like week uh, my downloads were exploding i'm like what is going on right now and it was because of this guy <laughs> nice. so well, I, it's just one of those things that you never know like where the connection is going to go um, um and where it's going to come from and, and what it's going to lead to i mean I, I had someone a friend of mine refer me a, a potential prospect and i had hadn't talked to this guy in like a year and i met him probably three years ago and mm -hmm. just the fact that that connection was so strong that you know, two and a half, three years later, he makes a recommendation to, uh, for his friend to talk to me about some podcast production stuff. You just never know. Like people tend to write off a lot of the, like the nature or, or the, the, the value or the weight of a certain relationship without understanding that you're literally planting seeds and True. not smart enough to figure out how, what type of degrees of separation it's going to be. But I've had fun playing around with some of these uh, online org charts and, and uh, flow diagram software just I was mapping the connections one day and I was like, okay, this person led to this person and this person led to the speaking gig and this one led to this. And it was, the, and I met this person cause I went to his conference yep. and it's fun. I mean, it's nice to see that web of interconnectivity and just realize, wow, like just continue to add value and just continue to make each engagement meaningful. That's uh, it. I mean, here's, here's a great example. I brought up the entire history of the show and clearly you can see when Dr. Jack Cruz mm -hmm. and the guy before him, these two giant freaking spikes, happened the guy came first then jack came in like they actually right here this one here is probably when that uh that first one aired with um mm -hmm. the other gentleman and then jack cruz just crushed it and then but it's also cool to see like hey the first you know first half of the year you know i'm like i'm pumping along pumping along and then okay there's there's a bigger base here there's a bigger baseline happening oh, yeah. Yeah. and i'm you, cool with it you have a new new plateau yeah so awesome. Uh, I remember I was just happy to hit a hundred downloads. And then all of a sudden when Jack aired, like he's the first time he crushed a thousand downloads in the first 24 hours. Cause yeah. I'd never even, I, I was dreaming of that. And all of a sudden, boom, it happens. I'm like, Whoa, I already had a, my first ever thousand download in the first 24 hours. Clearly it was the guest. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah, yeah I, I wasn't expecting it, but you have a very odd uh, point. Like Michael O'Neill, very big following solopreneur hour. I made him episode 001 and I didn't get squat out of that. 
he also didn't share it. We all, we all do that. I mean, we all, new yeah. podcasters. I mean, I yeah. had Charlie Dumas on early. Um, what, the one thing that I did take away from him because he does, he's so regimented. Uh, he does half hour interviews for the, for the listeners who don't know. I thought he only does 20 minutes. Now 20 maybe. I don't right? know. Right? Yeah, I, I think, I think I he's like gotten that anal because he's doing seven days a week. Let's be real. I mean, he's, he's hustling. So He told me his new formula. We, we chatted, not that this podcast moved, but last year we ended up um, out together and so I was just like, oh, so what's, what's going on? He's like, oh, so I was doing the, the seven. He was doing one day a week recording eight episodes. Basically. Okay. Uh, and then he's like, oh, I've got a new one. He's like, I'm doing um, two days a month and I'm doing 15 episodes each day. And that's the, and in two days he covers the whole month. I was like, hmm. you are. <laughs> wow. You are something else, my friend. That's uh, a lot. Yeah, that's a lot. But that's him. That's it. No, don't try to be him. He comes from a military background. Like he's. He's, it's in yeah, his, he's former army, right? Yeah, he's just like, that's the way he's wired. And like for people to try to be like him, I think it's funny every time. But, you know, take what you can from him and learn like best the, the, the idea and the concept. But uh, I have yet to see anyone that can out John Lee Dumas, John Lee Dumas. Well, he's been doing it longer. Yeah. He's also created the financial freedom so he yep. can just do this. You know, yep. all of his coaching communities, his books, mm-hmm. everything else. He's got the freedom. So mm-hmm. he can do that. So that's fine. Um, I tell you that all the time. Like, I got, we have to be patient. You and I have to be patient with what we're doing. It's like, mm-hmm. hey, man, it takes time to build that. He's had, what, five plus years? I don't even yeah. know how long he's been doing this. I think it's been five years, right? Yeah. Or is it right. longer? It doesn't matter. Point is, it's like, hey, man, he found his niche. He started crushing it. He did it before other people. And that's just the way it is. <laughs> I joke around with people that all the time. It's like, hey, you don't know where it's going to go. Um, like, here's another great episode. This has got 600 downloads. That's a wheat leaky gut vaccines with a paleocardiologist. He's a, he wrote the book called the paleocardiologist, mm-hmm. but so I, I mean, basically it looks like my, usually my top performing episodes are health related. But the other interesting thing about health related topics, and this might be something to consider is the fact that they lend themselves well to keyword searches when people have that top, when people have that issue. Yeah. You know, they're searching for those words. So this well, is, well, cause health is a big issue right now, especially yeah. here in the U S so yeah. like, actually there you go. This is the guy I had on first, Kevin Cottrell. He just relaunched a whole new podcast uh, called the Health Nowcast. Mm-hmm. And, but he's just about to hit 1,000 downloads, and he was back on episode 44. So, and I've got, I'll be airing episode 114 on Friday. But it was him that led to Jack Cruz. Okay. And, and, and I, wasn't sh- I wasn't sure if it was the words paleo, cancer, and sleep that got his downloads, or if it was the Silicon Valley, yeah. or it was because he had a good following online. Well, it could be a whole combination, and I think that's why uh, if, if you are podcasting, to make sure you really d- don't um, you know, spend the time to, to create a compelling title, because I think too many podcasters just slap something together, and they're like, oh, the, the funny show, you know, oh, yeah. with Joe and Dave. Like, no, see, I'm a marketing guy. I'm yeah. always starting to think about, I want to balance the, the words, but it's still got to be fun. Like, I don't want it to be kind of boring. Yeah. Like, uh, one of my, my episodes zero three, zero three was with another guy the same name as me, Mulvaney. Uh, I met him at an Olympic lifting competition. So his name is Chris Mulvaney, and he's got a more successful marketing company than I do in New Jersey. And uh, he's not been on a lot of podcasts. So he was episode 003. Yeah. So we met here locally at an Olympic lifting competition. And then next time I was traveling down there in business, I'm like, hey, man, let's set up a time. I'll come in with the microphones. Because most of my first episodes, I was always mobile. I was never doing this virtual stuff. I was going out and getting after it. And he's only had... Since so beginning, 252 episodes uh, or uh, downloads. But uh, I called him Rock Out Strong Marketing with Chris Mulvaney because I wanted his company to share it because it's marketing. But also, it turns out he also has a band on the side. So I just had some fun with that. So I was like, all right, Rock Out Strong, brother. So cool. yeah, you never know where it's going to go. But then I, obviously, I want- like you know, words like paleo and cancer yeah. and, and uh, solopreneur help now, you know, all kinds <laughs> of stuff. Um, I wanted to circle back because I don't know if I, I completely answered the question about the, you know, the, the challenges of getting started. So yes. I, I, I had the idea um, and I wanted to, to start a podcast. And so I started getting clients while I was still doing the nine to five. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I would do them in the evening. And, and that first client, I mean, you just have to go completely like all out, just like give them everything you've got. Because when I, I went to, so I signed up for this coaching program, Black Belt. It was, wasn't cheap. It was $1,500 a month. Um, and that's a month. Wow. That's commitment, man. Yeah. It's the most, well, here's what happened, Scott. 
I said, uh, I'm a big fan of Jim Rohn, and he's got this quote that says, you are the sum of the five people you most associate with. I use it all the time. Actually, I use a variation of it. I say you're the product of the five people you spend yeah. most time. Same thing. Yeah. And I was like looking at my circle, and I was like, who am I around? And I'm trying to be an entrepreneur. Is there anyone here that's going to motivate me? And I'm like, no, I got to get in a room. And uh, you know, my friend Jason Gaynard says, if you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the wrong room. Yep. And I was like, I got to get in there, and I want to feel like, I'm swimming in the deep end. And I went in there and there was just people just crushing it, like seven figure online businesses. And I'm like, how do you do that? Like, what do you read? Like, what, what conferences do you go to? What organizations do you belong to? I was just like absorbing it all like a sponge. And I was m mapping out my model in one of these like live intensives that he gives three times a year. And someone came up to me in the break and says, hey, when that's ready, I'd like to just sign up. And I was like, what? You mean you would sign up for this program? And they're like, yeah. And they called me that Saturday and they're like, hey, so can we get started? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, how much is it? And I gave them a number and, and within 10 minutes, it's in my PayPal account. And I was like, okay, I guess hmm. I'm in this. <laughs> I'm all in, brother. <laughs> and then Scott, man, I literally like bent over backwards for this client. And I was like, he's like, can you do this? And I'm like, yes. He's like, can you do this? Yes, yes. Because the thing is, I charge him one one uh, monthly fee that covered a lot of my like a retainer uh, yeah it's yeah like it's, it's a it's a model that i've been considering from a social yeah. media marketing perspective um it's interesting i'm like okay i know what my hourly worth is yeah. but i also am like you know it would be nice to have a retainer you have you have consistent income coming in i don't know yeah and for me it's it's give us i'm, I'm in the service based business you know it had to cover i mean i had to meet a certain number to cover uh editing costs and social media costs and all that stuff so and i said look and I knew that I could do all those things he was asking without it affecting like uh, my profitability. And I was like, I can do that. Or I would just train my VA to do that. And I was just thinking of all these new things and how to support. It helped me with Podcast Junkies. And I was like, oh, what if we did this? What if we repurposed the content here? And what if we, you know, take the transcription and we re-edit it on medium.com, which we're doing. And so like, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So he was seeing that I was going above and beyond. I was learning some stuff that did work and some that didn't. And so when the next client came, I was literally like tweeting, helping him retweet his subject matter. So he's startup. He's, he's the, he's the pitch whisperer. He's called the pitch whisperer. He helps startups. I like it. It's a it's great true. tagline. Um, so he was doing startups or startup funding as a tagline. And I used to use a service called the round team where you could automatically retweet a certain hashtag. Hmm. So he was doing it on behalf of his Twitter handle. Someone else saw it and said, Hey, who helps you with the podcast? He points her in my direction and she's client number two. And I was like, okay, <laughs> so that's, and then he referred someone else to me and that became like client five or client six. And so that's how it worked. It's like you add over deliver on value with those first. And so yeah, you got a better reputation. Yeah. Yeah. And I had these people in the works and then my job is like, oh, we're hiring a new person and he's got 20 years in like a uh, supply chain. Um, and, and I'm like, okay, writing's on the wall. Like that means I'm out the door. And so I put it in. And, did, and at that point, had you had mostly replaced your income? No, I hadn't. <laughs> okay. All right. Cause yeah, that's like, that's a, that's a bit, it's an important question. Cause yeah. I've made, I've made that mistake. I was like, yeah. I started launching my new, my side nutrition hustle years ago with isogenics. Yeah. And I'm like, I, you know, if I just free up my time, I can yeah. go all in. Yeah. And some people have done that and they've crushed it. But then you have this elephant like sitting its fat butt on you. And it's like, you, oh, you don't have enough money to pay your bills. Like, mm -hmm. or like you're going to run out of money type yeah. of thing. So like, do you really want that stressor? Eh. Yeah, if you can, if you're in control of that, by all means, I think I got to the point where I wasn't in control, but I had some savings. And, and if I'm being 100% honest, Scott, I cashed out my 401k. I've, dude, I, we just had this conversation last night with buddies of mine after we went mountain biking. A buddy of mine has built a very successful IT hosting company right now. He's crushing it. Yeah. And, uh, and he's like, dude, he's like, I've taken on, he's like, I can't bring on another client right now for three months. I was like, why? He's like, I need more tech people. I got to train them. <laughs> and he's like, I can't trust them with the clients. He's like, so he's like, we're, we're at max. But he talks about that, how, you know, other people he knows have started successful companies by just cashing out a 401k or borrowing from the 401k yeah. or whatever. So it, it's it was, real. It, it was, what's, what's really interesting is for me, the, the calculation was like, I was going to take a hit obviously on taxes, but at the end of the day, there was no stronger sign that I was all in and that I trusted that I was going to build my million dollar business, mm -hmm. by, you know, on my own. Hey man, live today. Yeah. If, and if I don't, if I don't believe it and if I, I'm going to be my number one cheerleader. So I'm yep. the one that said, 
I know you can do it, Harry. And I know that, you know, you're going to be scared. This is the scariest thing you've ever done. But if you didn't believe you can do it, whatever I had in that account was not going to be my retirement. Yeah. I don't care if you had a couple hundred thousand dollars. I don't care if you have half a million dollars. It's not going to be enough. And I'm like, no, my retirement is my business. And I'm all in on this. And I just went for it. And I, it helped me fund, get me to the point where I am. And I'm just continuing to build on, on top of that. But you're going to have to be forced you know, to make decisions like that as an entrepreneur. And there's going to be certain inflection points in your business. And you're going to have to decide, look, have I put this stuff in place that where I feel like this is something that, that I'm passionate about and that I, that I, I want to get up every morning and do? Like, I, I love this. I love what I do. And yeah. I love the fact that it, it, it gels well with my, my hobby, which is podcasting, and now my business, which is podcasting. And now I'm speaking about podcasting. So, I'm, you know, this is my brand now and this is everything that I do. But if I didn't feel like that was it and it was just some sort of side hobby or some sort of affiliate program or something where I'm making money off the, the back of someone else's work, you know, that's not powerful enough, you know, for you to make that decision like that. So I think just be, be prepared for the high ups uh, and the crushing lows. I mean, I'm, there's days where I would be like staring at my phone, refreshing my bank account balance in my business account, waiting for like invoices to get paid. Yeah. So like just very quickly turn around and pay vendors and it and it's <laughs> i mean you're literally sweating and you wake up in the morning if i didn't have my meditation practice in the morning i don't know what i would do because it's definitely my grounding and i need it every single morning and my intentions every single morning. nice pl nice plug back to the healthy lifestyle well <laughs> done to throw that in there because that's important these are those that's little totally little like, things that maybe we haven't fully invested in and like oh you know what? i've been considering maybe some yoga some, some meditation like you got to create balance okay. and and the, the beauty of what you just helped us you know as we as we bring the, the show to a close is like You've helped us understand that dude. everybody is going to be at a different phase of hustle and everybody starts from a struggle. Uh, most people, I mean, more often than not, you're going to struggle. If, if anything is worth achieving or worth having, it's going to take work sure. and it, it's going to beat you up along the way, but you're going to learn a lot along the way too. And, and I don't care if I'm talking about health, business or lifestyle. That's why I love these stories because that's what these, that's what our listeners understand is like, if you got something in the back of your mind, mm -hmm. start working on a part-time, start reading a book, listening to a book, as we hinted at earlier in the show, uh, start going to events just to network and connect. Like I'm, it's my second year going back to thrive this weekend. I don't know what could come out of that. I might land a client. I might just, I might just leave that event with a couple of great new podcast events. Besides the fact that like literally there's 26 world-class speakers, you know, just, I mean, Sean T, that crazy guy, the, the black guy online, that fitness dude for, oh, yeah. yeah, he's speaking, uh, uh, the Olympians, a uh, former Olympian speed skate, uh, gold medalist. He's speaking like just billionaires are there speaking. I'm like, what the hell dude? I'm like, I'm going to come out of that with mind blown. Cause my mind was blown last year. The famous Jack Canfield chicken soup of the soul, that whole book line. He spoke there last year. It was like, I have never seen a stage with more world-class speakers in just a weekend which is why I committed to go back again this year and I'll go back again next year. <laughs> Very cool. So, um, well, listen, man, as we bring the show to a close, I mean, you've already shared a hell of a story to even close this out with, but part of my format is I like my co-host to bring the show to a close because you've shared our time together today. And I really want people to say, listen, we've shared so many ideas and best practices today that they're going to probably forget half of it. So I always tell people, you know, go back, check the show notes later. But if they forget half of this stuff, what is something that in your messaging, what you're trying to get back to the world, what you're trying to do with everything you're going moving forward, if this goes beyond just, you know, trying to plug your own company, right? We're trying to talk about a message because that's what we need. We need a purpose behind what we're doing in life. I mean, so if we forgot everything else we heard from you today, I mean, how would you want to close out? What would be your final words to our audience from Harry? I believe every single person in your audience has a voice that needs to be shared with the rest of the world. But I don't want people to wait like 25 years to find theirs like I did. I listened to so many people growing up. I listened to my father's voice. You got to go to college. I listened to my boss's voice. Hey, you've got a six-figure job. You've made it. I listened to my half-brother's voice. Come to Atlanta. Work in my construction company. I listened to my partner's voice. Join my dot-com company for an unpaid salary and, and cash out your 401k. None of that stuff worked because I kept listening to other people's voices. And it was just this aha moment. There's near-death experience when I was in Thailand that I was like, holy crap, I don't want to die with my voice inside of me. So now my mission has become to empower the thought leaders of the world to just, you know, decide, just make the decision. You don't have to actually physically like get up and do something or sign a book or sign up to a course, but make a decision that today is the day you decide not to let your voice die inside of you. 
I love it, sir. And yes, that was a powerful story when we were at MapCon. Uh, to our listeners, guys, find your voice. If you didn't hear it from me, you've heard it from him. I mean, it, it shouldn't take a near-death experience to get you to that point. But if that does happen, freaking listen to yourself. <laughs> yeah. So again, uh, Harry Hank, I want to give you a proper goodbye. To our listeners, guys, Harry Duran, I already plugged it earlier, but I want to plug it again. Make sure you check him out at podcastjunkies.com. Make sure you subscribe. Hey, you reach out. Maybe he's got some extra shirts laying around if you do subscribe because I think he would appreciate it. Um, and also, if you are a podcaster hearing this, check out fullcast.co.co. Uh, maybe you're going to learn a lot of uh, new connections coming through a guy like this because he's working with a lot of shows right now and he's got a lot to share. So let me, let me do one more thing for your audience. Yeah. Uh, if you go to fullcast.co and then you put slash consult 20, it's a 20 minute free consultation for all your listeners. I typically do a 10 one on the website, but this is an extra 10 that I've got sort of with a secret URL, but it's consult 20 at the end of that URL. You can put it in the show notes. Uh, I will save that right now for our show notes. Thank you. And yeah, that's important. 20 minute chat, anything podcasting, just a free consulting call. I always like, I'm trying to give back. And a lot of times there's small tweaks that people are doing as they're starting to get launched, whether it's equipment, uh, just check in or, or hosting. I just want to be able to make sure people are starting off on the right foot because I've seen so many podcasts end up on SoundCloud and recording on iPhone. I'm like, nope. Oh, <laughs> you know, that's a whole, that's a whole other podcast about that. I agree with that. That's crazy. Yeah. So again, guys, there you go. So make sure you check out that special link, which will be in the show notes, guys. I always do this. So again, make sure you're do, taking action in your business, your lifestyle, your health, whatever it may be. He's got the heck, the, the little 20 hook up there. I love that. So again, to our listeners, guys, we say it before we say it again, keep living a fired up epic life. We'll talk to you guys again soon. Ciao. You are free of the pod. Now it's just video, <laughs> but so thank you. And yeah, I'll plug that in there because that's, I don't always ask that of people, but if people have it, I'm going to throw it in there. That's a little promo plug. Yeah. It might actually get people go and actually read the show notes because that's what's there. It's really for them, not necessarily for me, except yeah. for the Google recognition. I do appreciate the SEO. Um, but yeah, I'll have to get you guys hooked up, man, with uh, my girl, Whitney, my girl, my, my boy, Mike. And then, um, oh, I guess. Uh, I, and then my bookkeeper, maybe. Yeah, I think I, um, I use zero for my accounting. I don't know what you use, but I think if I can get someone who does zero. Zero is awesome zero and profit first that would be a win-win for me so oh it's i mean if nothing else like I'll, I'll send an intro to her and to you yeah uh because she's quite knowledgeable she's one of the first profit first professionals so i mean and his book rang true to me and it was a big step i never had a bookkeeper before i already had an accountant but again it's old methodology and i'm new age like you and i yeah. we're, we're breaking the mold man that's the whole point you got to work with people that are willing to break the mold with you yeah. And uh, talk about not my genius accounting bookkeeping. Uh, it is. No, I, I took all those courses because I was a business major. No, hated them. Rec reconciling my zero account. I'm no. like, oh man. I even put it in a calendar and then I stare at it and I blow it off. I'm like, I don't Oh, she that. told me. She's like, if I ever wanted to, she has clients. They literally send her all their bank logins and she oh, yeah. manages everything. Oh, yeah. And I was like, you know what? I'm open to it. I might not, need something like that. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I've got everything synced up. So it's, it's connecting to zero and it's yeah. a bank you know, just for my business. But like after that, and I've got some rules in there. So it's kind of like automatically signed. But yeah, it's just not. Oh, bad. my whole life is automated. So I mean, basically like tonight, um, one of my biggest clients, they regularly pay me every Wednesday night, Thursday morning, whatever. So when those monies hit, I do it manually. I don't automate it because I, I basically, I have a preset uh, formula. And each account has a certain percentage. So I have the operating oh, account. Yeah. You know, I have the taxes account. That's a big one, taxes account. Oh. Uh, and the profit first account. And then there's a, uh, a event, like I have a, I call it auto, I call it auto slash education. So I have, I'm going to split those eventually, but I have all my automotive expenses from travel because I drive a lot for one of my clients to go okay. do business meetings here in the Northeast to uh, my education, which means the conferences and everything else. So that gets a percentage. Uh, because I never set aside money for conferences before. Mm. Now, if I want to keep growing. Are you doing need, different accounts for all those as well? They're all separate. All separate accounts. How many, yeah. how many accounts do you have? Six. Six, yeah. I started with three. Okay. But then as we progressed into the formula, I said, all right, well, I mean, because I already had another account with my old credit union. I just never used it. Yeah. So that's where I hide my tax money and my profit first. Because yep. I don't want to have access to it. I don't have Visa check card access. I killed the cards. Yeah, so yeah. I physically have to go to the bank. Oh, yeah. That's the whole point, right? <laughs> right. And that's what I did. And now, like Michael O'Neill, he's, he's using Profit First too, but I think he's using one of those like rewarding online Capital One accounts. Oh. Um, I'm, I'm considering it. I just don't like to set up new. Right now, I'm, I'm wiping debt out. So I don't want to. 
Yeah. I don't like setting up any new accounts if I don't have to, uh, as far as like credit cards or anything. Yeah, because I think stuff. the whole point in the book is like, don't overthink it, make it super easy. Yeah. Yeah. And that's the beauty of it. Like everything, because once I changed my accounts a year ago to have everything assigned business, wise like that was a big first step, like separating your personal from your business yeah. and my business accounts are tied to my tax ID. That was the first huge transition. It was like, Oh, I finally am stopping muddying the, you know, the waters, so to speak. Yeah. Then, so that's when I went, mm-hmm. basically, I basically did the whole business and then an owner's pay account. That's my personal account. But then it's like, oh, now I got the tax account and then I have the, you know, profit first account and education. So yeah. yeah. So probably in the net, by the end of the year, I'll probably end up having one more just to separate the automotive operational expenses from the, uh, from the education and the, cause I want to start putting a, a larger percentage towards the automotive slash, or sorry, not the automotive, but the educational and the conferencing stuff. Okay. So, uh, because of some training programs in 2018 that I want to invest in. So mm-hmm. I want to start making sure that those monies aren't being taken away from, for the automotive needs and vice versa. Yeah. I'll definitely put a, a conference slush fund. As yep. that's, that's big on mine. That's yeah. I mean, again, as we keep growing, we have to keep getting those stimulus simulation, the networking growth. Mm. You never know what you're going to get. Like I say, I'm totally stoked for this weekend. So, yeah. um, but no, man, this is cool. I, I was looking forward to actually, I haven't spent enough time on your website. So it was great poking around in, inside your <laughs> world tonight. It gives me an excuse to, that's the whole problem with podcasting. It's like, I'm trying to read books, listening to books. Cause I bring authors on and yeah. I'm like, the information overload is, oh, is totally. was a wake up call. <laughs> the struggle is real. <laughs> it's definitely, and it's like, hey guys, like you want? I, I have actually already taken the new position. If authors want to come on the show, they got to send me the book. I'm not buying it. Yeah, I, I've I've already taken that position. I'm like guys, I have a library. I've invested enough money in authors. Yeah. If you want to come on the show now, send me your book yeah. or whatever because I'm I don't have the time for it. So if you want to make your book a priority for me to listen to, because I'm not going to bring you on the show until I've read your book or listened to your book. So that's kind of exciting too. Is like, I've actually had people send me books now. So it's like, Ooh, I've got enough authority. There's your little hack. And besides a press pass, yeah. get authors to give you their books, especially if they have their own podcasts. Like, Hey man, yeah. I'll bring you on as a podcast junkie, but send me your books. I know more about you. Yeah. I got enough to read right now. <laughs> See, this is a problem. So, so, all right. Well, so you're cool with me hooking those intros for you. Yeah, of course, man. Awesome. And like I said, they're fellow podcasters. Deborah's not, you know, she's a, her, her, her life is numbers. So yeah. that's why I work with her. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm looking to get my clients on some shows, but I, I want to do it with the referral network I've built up. So, um, yeah. there's uh, maybe what I'll do is, I don't know what the best plan would be. Maybe take a look at the show that the folks you've talked to, if they've got a show, but uh, I have one, one of my clients does coaches on wellness and health, uh, finances and yeah. And it's called Wealthy Wealthy. So she does finance. It's, it's easier for me. Yeah. Michael O'Neill talks about this. It's easier for me to approve new co-hosts coming on if they're in the interwoven inner circles. Oh, yeah. You know, I've got, that's a new thing now is these podcast, uh, not a recruiter, referral yeah. people. They're like, I have people emailing me every week. Hey, this person should come on your show. I think they're a great fit. Yeah. And then half of them aren't. Because I'm like, you're doing this to every podcaster. You're just yeah. sending them. You're just dumping. I'm like, dude, they have, as their bio doesn't mention anything about health or anything. Oh, yeah. I'm like, did you even look at my show? Yeah. <laughs> and I've actually no, replied to them. It's just better that way because I'm, I'm basically I'm introducing friends to friends. Yeah. You know? And I know, like, I know my client. I've known her for two years. I love her. She's awesome. Perfect. Uh, and she's ridiculous. She was at the top of her game in real estate, and then she just had a, just a crap, like a her health just crashed and she just rebuilt her business. Uh, oh, that's exactly the kind of person I want to talk to yeah. because it goes back to lifestyle balance, right? Yeah. I oh, mean, yeah. health and business are always at each other's like mm-hmm. they're, they're button heads. So, yeah. and there's always a lifestyle, hopefully a positive transition to be told, <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. but usually you got to hear about the pain along the way. Yeah. And she's all in the, now she's in like biohacking paleo world and yeah. she's, like she's just, Completely transformed her life. Oh, side note, when you're at the MapCon, speak of your shirts, did you get one of these? A sticker? Yeah. I don't think so. Well, I had these designed. I, I literally had just got them printed before I went to the, uh, the event because, well, and that makes sense though, because I was only going to give these to my co-hosts. Okay. Um, but like you, I was going down the conference. I'm like, you know, I, I set some of these on that table where you were standing in the corner. Mm-hmm. Okay. And like Anthony snacked, snatched one up like right away because he was like, yes, um, <laughs> even though he hasn't been on the show yet. Because I, like I said, initially I was going to do it. I was going to release these just to my co-hosts. Okay. Um, and then, so yeah, like long story short, now, now no matter what, you should have one. So 
email me back once I start sending referrals and like, okay. get me your address and I'll mail it to you. So, okay. Um, um yeah, well, so yeah, just let me know when it's live and I'll, I'll promote the shit out of it. Yeah. And I think I'm, cause I use Trello to track okay. all of my project management app. I love that by the way, if you haven't used it. So oh, yeah. I have my entire podcast flow system built into it now. It's awesome. Uh, it was more beneficial with my previous editor because he would actually do all my show notes and everything. But now it just keeps my, my sanity. I know where mm. the shows are at. That's good. Um, but yeah, you, I, I was an analyst years ago. So like you said, yeah. you're very techie. I'm techie. Yeah. I like to be organized. So yeah, I got one, two, three. Oh, 114 goes out Friday. One, two. All right. So you'll be, your th- you'll be after Friday. So you'll be three shows out. Okay. So I'm airing 114. You're going to be... I like to keep things very current. Okay. So I think you're going to end up being like 117. <clears throat> Perfect. You would have been 118, but this dude like backed out of his show and he was like, Mr. I'm the bed jet startup guy from Shark Tank. I'm like, well, he bailed on my show because his wife had a baby. I'm like, I guess I can. Yeah, all right. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I was like, maybe you shouldn't have booked a show during a pregnancy. Yeah. <laughs> very cool. So awesome, sir. Well, I'm going to send these intros out for you uh, yeah. tonight before I forget about it. And, and, uh, do you want me to send you a separate email to Deborah and you just uh, kind of like yeah. introduce? Cool. Yeah. And so. then for, um, should I send my, my, my client to your login page or do you want an email intro first? I mean, to your scheduling page or do you want to go, go ahead? No, okay. just say yes. Okay. Yeah. Send her to live the field.com slash schedule or just okay. click look on schedule and get her, uh, get her to go ahead and do the thing you did and what we'll get her on. So All right, brother. yeah. Happy, so happy to honor your inner circle. <laughs> Thank you so much. I appreciate it. All right, brother. All right. Take care. Take it easy. All right. Bye.